am Kasumi Yogi, and I am the Director of Marketing and Business Development for Games Done Quick. Kasumi, last time we talked was a year ago, and you were getting ready for this first Summer Games Done Quick to go online. And now you have an online SGDQ, an online AGDQ, and you have that whole Corona Relief Done Quick weekend under your belt. So how do you feel that your approach to online marathons has improved in the last year? I think that every online marathon is different because there's just so much going on and so many different runners, so many different games that every event is not the same, but our flexibility and ability to address anything that might come up has definitely leveled up a lot since last year. There's plenty of time to talk about the pandemic and we've had a year to talk about the pandemic, but for right now, I actually want to dive into some of the games that we're seeing this year. and. I see a lot of debuts, a lot of GDQ uh, debuts for this for this year on the schedule. There's plenty of time to talk about the pandemic and we've had a year to talk about it. But for right now, I want to dive into some of the games that we're seeing for this year's at GDQ. And I see a lot of debuts on the schedule. So what's one game we haven't seen at a GDQ event that you're looking forward to seeing the most? Personally, I'm excited for the rhythm games because they're games that we're not able to really show off very well at a live GDQ event, but they really, really, really shine here because we have people who are broadcasting from their homes and it's pretty cool to see, you know, all these people have uh, rhythm game cabinets and all that in their house. Personally, I'm a big fan of K-Shoot Mania. I'm really excited to see that at our event, but one of the, um, I'd say maybe sillier games that I'm really excited for, one of the games that um, <clears throat> personally I myself uh, was uh, aiming to have in our schedule as part of the games committee is Gone Golfing, which is like a horror golf game. Which it, 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 it sounds weird, right? But it's actually really cool. And I'm glad you mentioned like some of the more unusual games that we've seen, like like the rhythm games and like some of the stuff on the silly vlog. Looking back at the long history at GDQ, what do you feel are some of the more unusual runs that you've had in the event's history? Like what's something that one wouldn't expect to typically see at a speedrunning event? I would say the one that comes to mind first would be Step Mania. A lot of people were really surprised that we had a showcase of that. And we had like the camera on the keyboard that was just like, it was wild. But uh, I would say that that's the game that comes to mind first, just because a lot of people are like, oh, but that's not that's not a speed run. But our speedrun community isn't only limited to strictly speedrunning. We have a lot of very talented individuals that do things extremely well, like play rhythm games. And so when I uh, when I think of things that are out of the box, I would definitely say the rhythm games and Step Media was like the foray into that. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that you were part of the games committee this year. I remember talking to you last year and you said you weren't part of the games committee uh, for last year's SGDQ. But uh, for this year, I'm looking at that stacked seventh day. You've got the Super Metroid race. You've got a blindfolded Super Mario 64 run. You've got Demon Souls as a bonus game incentive. So how did the team decide on Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix to close the show? There are a lot of things that uh, happen. Well, first of all, um, I have been a part of the games committee for several years now. Um, because I do a lot of things with GDQ, I would say that my involvement is a lot less than it used to be in past years, uh, but I am still definitely assisting the committee. Um, for Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, when we choose a finale game, there's a lot of things that come to mind for us. And that's, you know, is it a game that is highly anticipated? Is the runner, you know, the, is the runner ready? Um, and the availability of incentives as well, because towards the end of the event, there aren't um, a lot of incentives left. So we want to make sure that we're still able to, to get some hype going as we close out the marathon. So Kingdom Hearts Final, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix was uh, in the running along with some other games, but um, you know, all, all of our runners are, are great. So it was very difficult to choose that. There are some big risks in running certain games in an online setting just because you never know if the runner is going to encounter a technical hitch or if there's going to be an internet connection issue. I know Bubsia has done Super Mario 64 blindfold runs in the past. We chatted up, we chatted with him before on Shack News about it, but this is his longest one to date. He's targeting two hours and 15 minutes for 70 stars. Is the team prepared for any potential issues? Just be, And I ask this because 
if his internet dies, he's not going to really know, is he? Yeah, so we have we have a lot of ways that we can communicate with the runners during their run. Um, and I think that in terms of communicating with him, we're prepared for that. In terms of things like internet going down, um, that we would lose our connection to him and, and that would be uh, that would be interesting. But I mean, GDQ has had so many things that uh, we've said that's never happened before. And I think that we will, our ability to adapt and our ability to uh, troubleshoot on the fly is one of the things that makes our team really, really strong and really great. Um, so I'm not worried. Do I think that something's going to happen? Yeah, of course, we're prepared for that. We're preparing for that always, but um, we're ready. We're, we're ready to take on the challenge and uh, hopefully nothing happens anyway. <laughs> when we talked last year, you talked about the importance of the hosts in an online marathon, just because there's no crowd to feed off of. There's nobody to applaud the runner. So I wanna take a moment to talk about how much the hosts have grown over the last year. In what ways have they improved, not just from hosting an online SGDQ or ATDQ, but also from their work on GDQ Hotfix? GDQ Hotfix is awesome. It's grown a lot since we've had it, and our hosts are fantastic. We have a lot of people that are working um, to really make a lot of awesome speedrunning content and to really highlight the community in a way that we're not able to do when we're limited to 130 hours. Um, and I'm I think that the hosts have been doing a fantastic job. You know, at GDQs, they um, they really hype up the audience and even more so now because there is no audience um, attending uh, Summer Games Done Quick 2021 online, but um, they're, you know, they're there. They're here to be the connection to our audience and to really, you know, let to, to just communicate with them and let them know what's coming up and what to be excited for and what things are available for them to donate for and all that. And, you know, our hosts are super, super important. And that also goes for our interviewers who have been doing fantastic as well, creating extra content so that people can get to know the speedrunners behind the speedrunners themselves because they're talented individuals that a lot of them balance work and life. And I don't know, I'm just... I, I'm very grateful for them, and I feel that they've come a long way. There's a, they have so much more responsibility now than they did back in the past, and they've handled it well. And now with the extra responsibility of handling it remotely, it's uh, they're they're fantastic, and we 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 could not do it without them. I want to sort of stay on the topic of growth because I remember your speech at the end of AGDQ's 10th anniversary. You talked about how much everyone has grown in the last decade. Like runners have grown up, they've gotten married, they've had kids. And while there are many familiar faces still taking part in GDQ events, we're also seeing a lot of new faces, a lot of the new generation of runners. So who are who are some newer speedrunners that you can think of that you feel are especially worth watching this year? I'd say that we have a lot we have a lot of different runners that are that are able to attend events. If you were to look at the list from like Awesome Games Done Quick 2010, uh, or sorry, uh, Classic Games Done Quick, and then look at the schedule now, there's there are some people that have been doing runs throughout the years, like Mike Uyama, of course, but we have so, because we've expanded the event to fit a lot more runs and they're not only that, but GDQs get a lot of exposure to, to a wider audience. I think we've seen a massive growth in people who are the amount of people who are interested in speedrunning and interested in speedrunning at events. So I know that I've said it a lot, but a lot of the rhythm game runners are definitely on the newer side because, you know, they can't really show off their skills at a live event, but they're able to show up for these events. And we also have a lot of, um, we have a lot of international runners that may not be able to attend events, but are able to do so because they can participate from the comfort of their home without needing to travel. So I would say that we we have a lot of uh, international runners and a lot of runners that may may not be able to accommodate traveling that are now able to do so. There's just there's just so many. When I talked to you last year, the atmosphere wasn't great in regards to the pandemic. There were setbacks, case numbers, COVID cases were rising daily, people were restless, and it didn't look like we were gonna see the end of the pandemic anytime soon. 
But now I'm talking to you a year later and the outlook is a lot more optimistic. People, more and more people are being vaccinated. People are able to leave their homes. We're getting back to normal, like they, like as days goes on. So do you feel that the team will be ready to host an, a live Awesome Games Done Quick in January? We're definitely thinking about it. There's, we're, we're keeping an eye on the state of, of the state of affairs for the United States, I would say we're doing fantastic. You know, we have a lot of people vaccinated, but when it comes to internationally, our international speedrunners, there it it doesn't look quite the same for them, and we're being very cognizant of that. Um, there, I would say that uh, us us people here in the United States, we come from we come from a lot of privilege in that we're able to get access to the vaccine. Everybody, uh, you know. The government said that we're able to everyone is able to get access to the vaccine as of may um that's not really the case internationally and we're while we are very grateful for the way things are here um that's just not the case everywhere else so we're being very cognizant of that and um yeah we're just going to keep an eye on it and hopefully you know our goal is to go back to on-site events because we miss our friends we miss seeing some speed runs done in person and we miss you know just the fun that comes with a games done quick event but we do want to be very careful so we'll keep an eye on it but um we are very excited for how things are going here and i realize the answer to this may be very similar but as a follow-up to that if there were hypothetically speaking to be a live twitch con and twitch gave you a call and said we want to bring back games done quick express for this year would everyone put, be ready for that <laughs> we love Twitch. They have been great partners with us over several years, and um, I would be looking forward to something like that. But we do want to be careful, and we want to make sure that you know we have the runners and you know our audience, our fans' best interest in mind when we make decisions like that. So, wouldn't say yes, but definitely would be something we would be interested in. More GDQ events, more speed running, more speed runners being uh, showcased fantastic right but uh we want to be careful and lastly I, I love asking these questions from the perspective of somebody who's just discovering games done quick for the first time if somebody has never seen a gdq event for the first time would you like to tell the history of super metroid at this event and the <laughs> or and the origin of the kill versus save the animals incentive <laughs> so there has been a lot of talk about Super Metroid throughout the years. A lot of people have said Super Metroid is like the staple of Games Done Quick to the point where the one year that we didn't have it, um, media was covering, there's no Super we wrote Metroid the story on, on it. GDQ. <laughs> there's, there've been a lot of, we saw a lot of that that year and it was, um, we are just like, oh wow, people, people love their Super Metroid and it's true. And um, Save and Kill the Animals has been around for a very long time. I talked to Mike Uyama about it a little bit, and he told me that uh, this because these events predate me and I was just a viewer at that time. He said that he recalled that the uh, the Save and Kill incentive wasn't really around until like 2011 or 2012. And that was because um, somebody had actually donated to say like, save the animals at that point and then it became like a really big thing because people were donating to say save or kill and a lot of people are really excited for that incentive to the even to the point where the one event that we didn't have super metroid that was covered that had that got a lot of coverage people were still donating and saying save the animals so it's definitely something that we appreciate a lot and it's one of those it's one of those memes that that um, a lot of GDQ fans like to like to um, engage in every event, regardless of whether Super Metroid is there and Save and Kill the Animals is is in existence. They find a way to put it in there. In fact, they've had a we've had some incentives that were kind of like that, where it was like save the Yoshi or let the Yoshi fall into a pit. You know, um, do you hug the character at the end of Undertale? Do you not? Um, yeah, people really, really like the option of choice and Super Metroid is a fantastic way because it's either you be faster or you save the animals. 
Sumi, when can people catch uh, Summer Games Done Quick this year? You can catch Summer Games Done Quick live from July 4th to 11th on twitch.tv slash games done quick. And stay tuned to our Twitter as well, twitter.com slash games done quick for any updates that you might want to see regarding the event, as well as some cool pictures that we have planned as well. Will the goose be back? Are you talking about the goose that uh, whose leg that I broke on accident? Yes, that one. <laughs> that goose is forever the GDQ goose. We actually got a new one because I unfortunately cannot be trusted with the goose. In fact, I have my own goose here at home that I ordered after the event and I actually ended up breaking that goose's leg too. That goose met a similar fate. So the goose is still around and it will be around always. Okay, keep the geese away from Sumi Chu. <laughs> All right, Sumi, thank you so much. This was, this was great, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it a lot.